Alan? Okay, uh, so this is uh, going to be a sort of intro to uh, YouTube marketing. Um, my name is Alan Pollitt. Uh, you can check me out on my website at alanpollitt.com. I've been doing uh, web marketing for about 15 years now, and I've been on YouTube for many, many years. But I'm probably like many of you, uh, I'm actually terrible on YouTube. My, my personal videos are the worst, but I do a good job for my clients. So my clients' videos do very well on YouTube, and uh, I help them often. But I have yet to help myself, so bear with me on that one. So if you check me out on YouTube, you know, you'll see what I'm talking about there. But, um, but the strategies that I employ for my clients do very, very well. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I do, and you can uh, use it for your own, your own businesses. So the first thing is um, YouTube is number two. Uh, what does that mean? I'll explain it. Uh, where we start when we're looking at YouTube, and then we're going to go into video creation, how to make videos, how to make them quickly and easily. Um, the, second th the next thing is uh, keyword research. Just like when you do SEO on Google, well, you have to do the same on YouTube. So that's the keyword research part. Um, how to rank at the top of YouTube, and uh, some bonus tips. So we'll get right into it. Uh, YouTube is number two. It's actually the second largest search engine in the world. So Google is number one, and YouTube is number two. Both properties are owned by Google. So <laughs> Google being number one and number two is pretty great. So <laughs> they basically dominate this, the whole entire web in terms of traffic. And YouTube being the number two portal for traffic is, is it's being said, it's very important to have your presence there because it's free traffic to your business. So um, even the short time that we've been talking, uh, this is you know, in this uh, quick intro into uh, YouTube, well, 500 hours of video have been uploaded to YouTube in that short time. So. It's amazing how much content's being added to YouTube on a on a minute to minute basis, and um, the goal is to be found within that just sheer volume of content. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Where to start? So the first thing is you got to determine what your goal is. That means deciding what you want YouTube to do for you, and what you want to get out of YouTube. So. Um, do you want these users from YouTube to go to a website? Do you want them to just view your, your YouTube channel uh, and you know view your videos to educate them about a product or service? Or do you want to create a, just a purely informational or uh, entertainment-based YouTube video uh, where it just you know increases like some kind of entertainment value and then you can sell ads through that video or whatever to really, you know, to monetize it. Is if that's your goal then there's different strategies you can use to to achieve those goals. So with all that in mind, you you have to decide what what you want to do with YouTube and how you're going to leverage it for your business. So I'm going to give you some some video uh, creation methods that I use and I use for my clients uh, and I recommend to use for, for your own projects. First is a simple one. And if you look at my YouTube channel, you'll see I do this one a lot, is I just use my webcam. Now, I recommend that you get a better webcam than the one I have. <laughs> um, get a good quality webcam that does HD video. And you can do relatively inexpensively uh, good quality video with your webcam. Uh, most webcams come with uh, the software to actually do video editing on a, on a small basis, um, and you can do a lot with a webcam. Um, you probably don't have to spend more than $100 to get a high quality webcam. Uh, the other method is a digital camera. Um, I just recently purchased a Canon a uh, digital camera, and it uh, does HD video. It does uh, 720 uh, resolution, so it's high quality image, uh, and it was like 100 bucks. <laughs> so you can get really good quality uh, video from very inexpensive uh, sources. 
Uh, so a digital camera or webcam is probably the way way to go if you want to do it on a, a sort of low budget. Um, one of the things you can do is when you do use these kind of things, make sure that you have a, a white backdrop or some kind of drop back behind you so that you can uh, you know, get a, a better image when you're doing the thing. And I recommend white background mainly because if you have a white background later, if you use some other program, you can add in um, captions or something where there's something, some activity happening within that white space. So it's always good to have a white background in behind you. Um, the next thing is also to remember lighting. Always have really good lighting because uh, it's really important. Uh, and have good quality uh, microphone or some kind of sound equipment to, you know, to get good uh, audio as well. Um, with my videos, I, tr I try to do that, but what I recommend is, is you can do that with the webcam, you can do that with a digital camera if you want to do it on the cheap. If you want to do it a little more professionally, get a, a separate microphone for your, for your, uh, for your videos. You can also, if you um, want to take a different approach where you're not really comfortable being on camera or if you're not comfortable doing uh, video through uh, a digital camera or webcam, you can use video creation websites. And the ones that I like um, are Animato, uh, Extra Normal, and Flip Press, a uh, Fixed Press, sorry. Um, Anim, uh, Animoto, uh, what it does is um, it allows you to take images and you can basically put them all into a video and you, you determine how long each video, uh, each image will, will show up on the screen. So they could be slides of uh, things you want to say or it could be, um, could be images of just nice backgrounds or images of your website. Uh, it could be whatever you want in those images. Uh, and then what you can do is um, when it shifts between the, the different images, it, can, uh, it will actually have sort of a neat effect where it will fade in, fade out, go big or small to make it look very stylish when it creates the video for you. Uh, there's a, you can create v free videos on that site, and they're about 30 seconds long or you can pay for the service and you can get longer um, videos which don't have their branding on it and you can put your own branding on it. Um, another thing that you can do is you can embed videos within the video. So you can have different effects as a result. So, and they also come with a nice uh, library of uh, uh, clip, clip uh, music clip audio files so that what you can do is you can put in nice music within your video. Another thing that I rec recommend doing is uh, just creating audio of your own voice or, or uh, getting a voice recording that, of, of a nice professional voice and you can put that into the video as well. Um, so Animoto does all of those wonderful things and it's a very, very simple software to use. Now, Extra Normal is another site that I really like. Uh, it has a whole bunch of animation, <laughs> and you can get the um, uh, you know these little an little animated characters that they can you can adjust their facial expressions. You can uh, you can change the way your the camera is facing them, and you can have them interacting to tell a story. Uh, and they have different voice files, so each each character can have its own little voice, and you just type in what you want these little characters to say. To create a, a two-minute video is very simple with with their software. Um, the the if you do a, a YouTube search and you search for um, uh, iPhone uh, and then extra normal, you'll see a very cute video. It has a bit of course language, but it's a very cute video about the iPhone <laughs> that has received millions of views, and it's all done through their software. So um, very good quality uh, animated videos. Another one is uh, FlixPress. Um, you know, they're, they're another tool. They, they're very, they create very nice entries to uh, videos, 
and uh, they allow you to, uh, you know, they have their own um, archive of uh, images and uh, of video clips that you can use to build a video. Uh, it, it, they can do some really nice things within their um, within their tool. Um, it's one that I'm not as familiar with uh, over the other two, but it's 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 one that I'm you know getting more experience with, and it seems to be a pretty good software. Um, if you want to go beyond the web and uh, actually use video software on your own computer, the ones that I recommend are Camtasia Studio and After Effects. Uh, Camtasia Studio is very nice because what it allows you to do is, for example, if you're trying to explain YouTube, it will actually allow you to show a page and based on where your cursor is on the page, it will actually zoom into that part of the page or zoom out. So what it does is it makes a, a, a page like the one that we're looking at right now, seem a lot more interesting, much more interactive because there's movement of, on that page. So it can give you a really nice effect, especially for, um, for videos where you're trying to explain something that is a web-based uh, application. So if you're trying to show your website and you're showing, okay, you've got to click here or uh, see this video here or go this page, it will actually flow really, really nicely and it will give you that nice effect where it's, uh, you know, moving, the screen's moving. Uh, another thing that it allows you to do is it allows you to clean or edit audio. So if you, when you're doing your video, uh, it's recording your voice, but if there's any noise in that uh, voice, they can actually clean it all out so that it becomes very clean and crisp and clear. So it's a very nice uh, software. I think it sells for about two to three hundred dollars. Uh, After Effects is more of a professional um, software that you can use. It's one where you've already created your video and now you want to take it to the next level. Um, there's some really good, if you do a search on YouTube again, <laughs> uh, for After Effects videos, uh, there's some really great examples of the kind of cool things that you can do. One of the ones that I saw was uh, they had this baby lifting cars and it was all done through After Effects where they basically edited the two videos of the car lifting and the baby, and it made it look like this little baby was like Superman lifting cars. Uh, another thing that they've done is like um, a lot of people use it when they're creating like Star Wars uh, parody videos where they're using lightsabers because they can, they can edit in those kind of glows and the different... Um, different effects, special effects like that. So you can, it's a professional software. Uh, it, it does amazing things. So After Effects, uh, it's a really good one to, to try out. Um, if you want to do a really professional video. <laughs> um, and the last option to create a video is really looking at other companies to do it. You know, have them do all the work. Uh, typically, you're paying per, uh, per 30 seconds of video. Typically, the prices are anywhere from $250 to $500 per, per um, 30 seconds of video. So the point is you, gotta, you really should know what you want from your video, and um, you, you have to budget it accordingly because it can be very expensive to create a, a full-length video. Uh, another thing is you can get some companies that will actually come into your office and do recordings at your office. They'll do all the, the screen boards, uh, they'll do the they'll bring in the videographer and they'll they'll set up situations within your office to do sort of like a video testimonial for you. So there's a lot of good companies that can do that. And if you contact myself or Carla uh, or anyone at uh, Small Business Solver, we'll definitely give you um, some pointers on some video companies to use. Um, and that's that's all the methods. There's other, there's other things you can do, but those are the main methods to create videos for YouTube. So you got a video now, and it's like, what do I do with this? Where do I, which way do I go with this video? Where am I, you know, you got to think of how are you going to start promoting it on YouTube? Well, the first thing that I do is I, I do keyword research because I want to pick words 
for my video that will um, will get the most searches. Um, the two most popular search things on YouTube right now are cats and dogs. Now, obviously, I'm not I'm a web marketing guy, so I'm not going to target those terms. But there's other terms that get just as many searches, or well, not just many, but get many searches on YouTube that can drive business to me if I if I target those words within my video page. So what I always do is start with what Google gives us. Google has a great keyword tool. You just go to Google and type in keyword tool, and you'll get into the Google AdWords tool. And they have uh, records of all the keywords that have ever been searched on Google. And you just type in, the, type in your uh, root of what you're looking for. For example, in my case, I'd be looking for video marketing. So I'd see how many people search for video marketing. It's in the thousands. So I'd be like happy. <laughs> and then they give you other examples of keywords that people use. So those form the basis of what you're going to be using, the language that you're going to be using when you're creating your video uh, descriptions and titles and so forth when you create your video, uh, upload your video to YouTube. So that's the first source that I look at. Another thing that you can do is go to YouTube itself. If you type in um, something on YouTube, even before you complete the word, it will actually auto-complete to you for the, the word. And what that does is uh, it tells you uh, what keywords other people have previously searched. So those become good keywords to target because if other people have searched it, and the only way that they become autocomplete on, on YouTube is if they've been searched a lot. So uh, if they've been searched a lot and it's autocomplete, well, then you know that those are popular keywords. So what you do is you start typing in your product or service, and you use the keywords that are, are autocompleted as ones that you're going to use inside your, your video description. Very important stuff. Uh, another thing is you, once you do a search on those, see what other videos come up. So these are popular, other popular videos. If you see a video that has a million views on it and it's in your field, well, then you know that, hey, maybe they did something right. Maybe the, the, the words that they used, the, the way they created their page, well, maybe they did something right. So ripping them off is always a good idea. <laughs> Just <laughs> see what words that they use and, and try to use similar language inside your descriptions, inside your title, and so forth. Why reinvent the wheel when it's been done so well by this other person? Well, you know, use what you can find, right? So use popular videos as a way to leverage good keywords. And write a list of all these things that you find. So the goal is to target the best keywords to drive as much viewers to your video as possible. So I always target the best keywords. So now you're probably wondering, okay, so you've done all that. You've done all this keyword research. You got you got all these great keywords inside your your inside your mind, and you have them, your nice list that you created, and you're wondering, well, now I have a video and I have all this stuff. Well, how do I get this video ranked at the top of search engines? Well, just like Google uh, has ranking factors to determine what website is at the top of the ranking, YouTube has the same thing, and it uses different ranking factors to determine whether one video should be ranked above another or so forth, okay? And some of the ones that are within the YouTube channel are the following. The title of your video. So if you name your video Video 1, well, that's not a very good title. But if you name your video Web Marketing for YouTube, that's, you know, that's a pretty good video. It's a fairly good uh, keyword. And if you put those keywords inside that title, you're probably going to be more likely to rank for those keywords. Um, one example I had was I, I, I did a title where I was promoting my um, reputation management book. And I put in um, online reputation management because I did some searches and I thought that that was a very popular keyword. Put that in my title for YouTube. And within the first few minutes of it actually being launched, it was at the top of YouTube's 
um, video searches. So if you do it right with the good title, uh, you can actually get really good results just off the bat with getting the title. But you have to go further than that. Uh, there's a big box for uh, description. And you, it's really important not to, to, to skimp out on that. You really have to fill up your description as much as possible. It's not about spamming the keywords. It's not about saying the same keyword over and over again. It's about saying um, many different keywords and giving a good description that people will want to read. Because at the end of the day, people will read these descriptions. So you have to make it um, something that's informative about your video, that is describing your video clearly, and at the same time, contain good keywords so the so YouTube search will rank you slightly better. Um, the other thing is tags. Uh, you can associate keywords with your video. For example, you can tag it with a whole bunch of uh, keywords like uh, your video is about YouTube, YouTube marketing, <laughs> uh, video creation. Uh, so that these would be videos, these would be tags that would be associated to the video that we're talking about right now. Um, so by creating those tags, you will rank well for any time that people search for those keywords that are in the tags. And when I come up with tags, I look at the top ranked videos. And I say, okay, what tags are they using? And I sort of try to incorporate those tags into my videos. And also I try to, um, again, go back to the keyword research and try to incorporate some of the keywords that I know are popular searched. Uh, another thing is annotations. Um, now a lot of people get confused with annotations, but annotations are texts that get overlaid onto a video. Uh, the way annotations work is you basically can type in uh, a title or uh, some kind of word that's going to appear on the screen. And when, when Google sees annotations on a video, it thinks that those words that are inside that annotation are extremely important. It treats them as a very highly valued ranking factor. So just having good annotations can make you rank well. And another thing you can do with annotations is you can put in links. So one thing I recommend is put in good uh, annotations with uh, keywords, but also put in annotations with uh, links to your next videos and also annotations to your website. So if you're trying to drive people to your website, you can use annotations to drive those people to your website. So annotations are extremely important. Um, another service that Google has recently offered is transcription. Uh, so all, the, t all the, the, the words used inside the video, Google can actually interpret it. So it can actually understand that somebody's been speaking all this time on the video, and it can actually do a transcription. And it's just like a closed captioning for TV. Well, it can do closed captioning for your video. And what it does is when it takes that transcription, it actually, it's, it's not 100%, so it's not like perfect, but uh, it, it gets all the language that was used in the video. So if you're using keywords in actually your script that you use it within your video, well, all of a sudden those become keywords within the transcription, and Google actually uses that very strongly, strangely enough, uh, as a ranking factor for whether or not your video should rank for those keywords. So um, you can, it's a, it's one of those things you can toggle, <laughs> whether you want to use transcription or not for your uh, videos. So I recommend using it so that it makes your videos more accessible and it makes them rank better. <laughs> so uh, it's something to definitely consider. Um, another thing that, so those are, the, those are just within the video, um, but Google, uh, Google slash YouTube, they look at a little bit more than that when they look at whether or not a video should be ranked at the top or not, they look at how well um, perceived is this video? How well is this video, what is the video channel's um, weight or how much value does this channel have that's putting out the video? So it looks at the video subscribers. Like if you have one subscriber to your channel, well, you're not really that authoritative compared to somebody that has 10,000 subscribers to their channel. So having subscribers, really creates weight uh, and value to your channel. 
For example, I have a couple thousand subscribers that I have for my channel. I use that to leverage uh, the power of the connections as a way to rank a little bit better. <laughs> so having subscribers, building subscribers to your channel is very important because it gives you that instant credibility when you're trying to rank a video on YouTube. Uh, another thing is it's called channel authority. Uh, it's the same idea, but it's looking at how much all your videos have been viewed by the people that are subscribers and the general audience on YouTube. So having ha when you launch a new video, if you've had always 10,000 plus views on your other videos, well, it's probably your next video is probably going to be a good one too. So YouTube will give you a bit of a boost when you're trying to launch a new video. So that channel authority that you've been viewed so much in the past, well, it will give you future benefits too. Uh, the video views actually on the specific video will impact ranking as well. So uh, if your video has one view and it's yourself that looked at it, well, that's not really that. It means that nobody really liked that video. Um, but if your view, if your viewership is pretty high, you get 100,000 views on it. Well, YouTube will say, hey, maybe people want to see this video. Maybe it should be ranked at the top, at near the top of the rankings for that whatever keyword it's targeting. So viewership is very important for the actual video. Um, Google and YouTube are always trying to improve their technology. So when they see the viewership, um, there was a whole bunch of tools that you could use in the past where you could basically do a refresh of the page. And it would basically view the video for maybe half a second or a few seconds. And just by doing that, the, the tool, the scripts that you could run, uh, would increase your viewership. You could get like a million views, and you'd be like, hey, I'm top of the world. <laughs> I've got a million views. And it, was, it wasn't real. Um, but you'd get real viewers later. So Google has become smart to that, and YouTube has uh, cracked down on that kind of activity. So what they do now is they look at video view duration. So if people are coming in and they're only spending a second on your video, well, that shows that they're not really interested. But if they're viewing it for the full length or most of the length of the video, then they know that your videos are interesting to the users and they'll generally rank them better. So hopefully you will watch this whole video and uh, my video view duration will be good and uh, I'll rank a little bit better because of your viewership. Um, the next thing is video feedback. Now, uh, that is the comments that people put with the video. Uh, what are they saying about your video? And if, uh, if there's a lot of feedback, it's, not about, uh, it's actually not about what they say. It's more about the quantity. So uh, if you have lots of comments about your video, that shows that there's a lot of interest in your videos, and you'll actually have a bit of a ranking boost. Uh, another thing is likes and dislikes. Um, it's, Google doesn't actually make the distinguish, distinguish, distinguish ah, whatever, the word <laughs> distinguishation between likes and dislikes. If you get likes or you get dislikes, uh, both benefit your ranking. Uh, even though you might think, oh, and dislikes means that people hate your video and therefore it's it's going to rank a little bit less, well, that's not actually the case. Um, it will actually rank you just as well because it shows that people are engaged enough to say, hey, I don't like this video or I don't agree with what the content is. Because this like doesn't necessarily mean that your video is hated uh, for the quality or anything like that. It just means that people don't agree with you. And discussion happens on plus and minus kind of side. So, uh, Dislikes can be a benefit to your ranking as well. So creating videos that encourage that kind of feedback uh, is important. So incur always end your videos with, hey, please comment below. Uh, if there's something you like or dislike, please give us a plus or a minus or like or dislike on this video. So always encourage your audience to comment, to ask questions. Okay? That's, the, the best videographers always will ask at the end of their video, they'll always say, please leave comments below, and they'll actually do a shout out 
to the people that have commented on previous videos. So there's a couple things you can do to encourage that activity because you really want to encourage people to comment, to like, to favorite, to, to do some kind of interaction on YouTube. Another thing that people are leveraging on YouTube in order to get some feedback is video comments. So if people actually create a video comment, that will also give you a bit of a ranking boost. So the more interaction that you can create with your video, the better you will be ranked. Um, and there's tricks to getting that interaction. So uh, I'll explain that hopefully a little bit later. Um, some of the off YouTube ranking factors, uh, just like any other page on the Internet, Google will look at the page and see how it relates to other pages. What I mean by that is are, they, are a whole bunch of people linking to that page? Are they, are they sharing that page? Are they, are, they, are, they, are they interested in that page? Um, if you have inbound links to your website, to your website, you'll rank well on Google. Well, if you have inbound links to your video where people are actually linking to your video page, well, that video will actually rank higher. Uh, so you, what you can do, uh, one of the, the tricks that I use, is I'll actually do a link building campaign for a video page to actually try to make that page look like it's very, very popular and it will rank better on YouTube. I shouldn't say this on YouTube because, hey, <laughs> they, might, they might get me for it, but it's the way to do it. You build links to your video, and you, uh, you basically can get a boost in the rankings. Another way of building links, but a little different than links, is social shares. So if you, you have your video, you like it on Facebook, or you uh, Google Plus it, or you put it on Twitter, well, that will benefit your rankings on YouTube all the social interactions will improve your ranking on YouTube. Uh, the last thing is embeds itself, where, where you're putting that video on other websites. So you take that video and you put it on your own website, you put it on your friend's website, or it's shared all over the place uh, through embedding. Uh, that counts as a ranking boost as well. So these are all things that are off YouTube that you can control to basically give your, uh, your video a bit of a boost on YouTube itself. Okay. Um, now, I'm getting into the bonus uh, section, and we're almost wrapping it up. So uh, this is sort of a quick course. So <laughs> uh, if you want to see the full course, you can always uh, talk to me later or uh, uh, go to one of my seminars. But um, we're trying to keep this short. So. Um, one of the bonus things that I'd like to tell you about is Gangnam Style. And the Gangnam Style currently has just around 1.6 billion views. Uh, it's the most watched video ever on YouTube. Um, and it, uh, it, it's insanely popular. Um, but it, it can't, it's, in, it's not in English. It's from Korea, uh, where and it's about something that happens in Korea, <laughs> you know. Uh, so what's the appeal? Like you're, you're probably wondering why why would a video that nobody can understand or, or very few people can understand have such a mass appeal? Well, it has a catchy sound. Uh, it's very funny to watch. It's visually entertaining, um, and it leveraged other people. What I mean by that is it encouraged parody. Because it's a parody video itself, it encouraged other people to create parody videos. And that's where real viral marketing comes from, where if you can create a video that uh, has that sort of um, ability to uh, encourage parody, where people are going to create their own versions of the same video, uh, and one thing with Gangnam Style, he basically allowed them to video comment as much as they wanted. He, he encouraged it. So what happened was people were creating all these parody videos. So his video would get X number of views, but these parody videos would get a bunch of views, and his video would always be associated with it. 
So basically, other people ended up promoting his video. So it became very huge uh, very quickly. It just grew and grew and grew. Um, and the song became like the number one song in the world as a result. How do you do this for your business? Well, well I'm not going to expect everybody in the world to create parody videos and to create musical videos you know, or to promote their businesses. It just doesn't work. But you can leverage uh, popular videos to make your video popular. So what I do uh, for my clients is the following. If I see that they're in a, a niche field, I do searches on YouTube for that niche. And I find, what are the top videos within that niche? And I say, okay, this one has like 100,000 views. Or this one has 200,000 views. Well, I'll look at those videos. And what I'll try to do is use my client's videos as a video response to it. Because if I know, I know that they're getting 200,000 views, they'll probably get a few thousand more after that point. So if, you're, if you look at a video on YouTube, you'll notice that the video responses are always the first thing seen underneath the video. So those become uh, popular on, in their own right because so many people are viewing those, those uh, video responses and they'll just naturally click into them. When people surf on YouTube, they have a tendency of just following along. They, they do one search and then it leads them to a whole bunch of different things because they're just clicking not necessarily words anymore. They're clicking between videos. So having a video response on a very popular video can drive huge uh, viewership to your video. And it can be a very powerful way of encouraging uh, your video to get the viewership that you need in order to rank on YouTube. And therefore, you get even more views. So um, it's an it's a, it's a easy tip to, to in, uh, use, where you basically create a video response to popular videos. Uh, and the benefit of that is, is it's just amazing. Another way to go even further than that, if you want to be a little bit more um, aggressive about uh, your uh, YouTube marketing, uh, what you can do is actually contact the, the video owners of a popular video or of a popular channel and say, hey, uh, do you want to do something where we work together on a, a new video? Or do you want to interview me? Uh, a really popular method is to get companies that do interviews to interview you and your product and do a little segment. Sometimes they charge for it. Sometimes they need the content because these are video bloggers, or vloggers, they're called. Um, and you can basically uh, give them the content that they need in order to maintain their show because they're always looking for new content and new videos that they can add. So there's, these are some of the methods that will help you to create a viral video, one that ranks at the top of YouTube, and uh, gets you the most viewership and business that you want off YouTube. I hope you like this. Uh, just to go over quickly what I was discussing, uh, make sure when you, you know what you want from YouTube, uh, make sure you know uh, what keywords to target, and make sure you create a good quality video, and um, try to learn from other successful videos on YouTube. And if you get those four points out of this video, then you've, you're, you're well on your way to becoming successful off of YouTube. And I hope you have every much success. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm always here to help.